Good morning. Welcome to the Gospel According to Kennison, and I am Bill Kennison, your host and teacher, and and uh, I saw something this week that really just made me feel good. Uh, Susie, who is also a uh, teacher signing and is a high school teacher, uh, she had put up, what teacher had the most influence on you in your life? And one of our listeners, Joe, uh, I saw put in the Reverend Bill Kennison. And I really, I thought that was great. But I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Uh, Sherry and I are fortunate enough to still have her mother with us at 91. Uh, my mother uh, transitioned into that next level of life back in 19. 95. So she'd been there for a while, getting ready, I guess, for whatever party they would they would have for me. But we want to welcome you to beautiful, sunny Southern California. All right, Sherry's chuckling a little bit. It's not exactly sunny, but it is warm and it's Southern California. So we want to welcome you to our program. And during this program, if you have a, a prayer request, uh, if you want to put that down, Sherry will give it to me at the end of the program. Pardon? Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Gigi, Donna, Sandra. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. And uh, Sam used to say all the time, always love your mother. You'll never have another. And my mother has has transitioned, like I said, back in 1995. A very strong lady, beautiful, talented, and uh, very strong. And I would love to have her here today to take her into my arms and to wish her a happy Mother's Day. But since I don't, I have all the rest of you. And if you aren't, uh, if you don't mind me accepting you as my family, then uh, you're in my family. We want to get started with the lesson this morning, and it's a continuation of of last Sunday, and what we've been teaching on is the truth about prosperity. The truth about prosperity. That that's that's what we're that's what we're talking about, and uh, to catch us up just a little bit from last week, we found out last week that. You are born to be rich, or you uh, are going to to grow rich by the use of your faculties. But the entire thing is, is that the foundation of, of what you believe, or the foundation of your prosperity, you were born with. Born. You were born to be prosperous. I want to keep driving that into... Uh, your thinking into your consciousness, into your very being. You were born to be prosperous and uh, to have prosperity. And so I want to uh, I want to establish in your mind and in your consciousness, you deserve to be rich. A lot of people are afraid to be successful. A lot of people are they're just they're afraid of success. But God made you. To be successful, you are his representative on this earth, and that that gets that gets exciting. But I'm I'm trying to catch you up with with what we did last week. Uh, also, uh, we covered a scripture that Jesus gave to us is in Matthew six and thirty three, and it said, "But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be yours as well." Now we upset we upset uh, one minister by by saying that that Jesus wanted us to have the power to do the things that he did and even greater things. So God made you to be the 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 picture of success, the picture of prosperity, the picture of health. He made you that way. So that is your natural habitat. If you're going without, if you're having financial pressures, if you're sick, then I'm going to just lay it the way it is. You're not taking advantage. 
of what you're entitled to have. Somebody said, but you don't understand, Bill. I've, I've never come down to the altar or whatever. You know what? When you were born, God wanted you to, to have this. So that's what we're, that's what we taught uh, last week. Another thing that we brought up last week was the word prosperity. The word prosperity. Now, if I was to ask you, what does that mean? A lot of you would start talking about how much money you got or, or the car you drive or the house you live in. But the word prosperity actually comes from the Latin word, which literally translates according to hope or to go forward hopefully. In other words, the things you have hoped for. Isn't that what he said he would give you? That's what prosperity is. Prosperity, and if you've got somewhere to write this down, you need to write this part down. Prosperity is a way of living and thinking, not just money or things. I'll repeat it. Prosperity is a way of living and thinking, not just things, not your car, not how much money you got, not your house, not your toys. Poverty, ironically, is a way of living and thinking and not just a lack of money or things. So here we have both ends of the spectrum. You have prosperity, which is a way of living and thinking. You have poverty. That is a way of, of living and thinking. So it's up to you. What do you want to live in? I think I know the answer for most of you, but, you know, religion does crazy things to our, to our mind. Somebody said, well, then why am I so limited? If that's true, Bill, then why am I so limited? Well, it is our thinking and our consciousness that sets all the limits in life. I was a psychology major in college. And uh, one of the things that I remembered them kind of, uh, or was important to me, I can't say they drilled it into us, but it was important to me. And that was, the teacher told us uh, one time that we're psychotic one, one way or another. We are either psychotic in the way that it's always everyone else's fault or we turn it inwardly and the other psychosis of it is it's always my fault. And that's where we, we basically kind of fit into. is either it's everyone else's fault or it's all my fault. When it comes to your prosperity and it comes to your poverty, I got to be honest with you, it's all your fault. <laughs> your thinking and your consciousness. But the same thinking and consciousness that has got you into a mess is the same thinking and consciousness, if you'll change it, that'll get you into prosperity. And you'll have it all the days of your life. Prosperity is spiritual well-being. It is spiritual well-being. Forget the idea of the money. Now, let me go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it again so that you really understand what Jesus said. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness... And all these things shall be added as well. So you have, now you see where your desire should be. Your desire should be seeking the things that God has. And the good thing about it is, and we're, we're going to get into it, you don't have to fast for this. You don't have to, to get down and pray every day. Uh, oh, God, you know, send me something. Because that, that actually sets the illusion that he's out there and you're down here. No, he's right there with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. And yet we talk to him like he's afar off. God is, is not afar off. He's right where you want him to be. It's not what happens out there, but what do we but what do we do or we think 
about what happens. Last week I told you that my father told me, it's not what happens to us that's important, it's how we react to what happens to us. And I found out the older that I get, uh, the more, the more long-suffering and merciful I am. Rather than be so quick to just jump right into a situation, I've, I've seen that most of them will work their way out. That only comes with age and, and with wisdom. Most of us, and here's our problem, most of us that are watching me this morning, and that's, that's well over a thousand people now, we're growing like leaps and bounds, but most of us have grown up under the influence of religions that dealt with many different things. Uh, it dealt with God and, and heaven above. It dealt with earth and human life for us beneath. It dealt with hell and, and Satan under the earth. That's what religion gives to us. Let's, let's break down the word religion. The word religion comes from a root word that means, now this is amazing, it means bind together. Bind together. That's, that's what it means in the, in the uh, original writing of it, from the root word of it. The word actually means unity, oneness, and a wholeness. That's what religion really is supposed to be about. But religion has become just the opposite of that. Religion does not represent unity. They can't even get along with the church across the street. Religion uh, in people's minds and in, it is, in its existence is not a oneness. If anything, religion divides and it separates. Religion is not wholeness. Matter of fact, it encourages your poverty. It encourages your sickness and your disease. Like this is some will of God. No, it's not. God desires that you be prosperous and healthy in everything that you do. Oh man, I get I get, ex I get excited about this. I'm trying to to uh, just relax a little bit without Susie here, our beautiful signer. It's kind of like just setting me out like a wild horse without any fences. I'm just I'm just out there. She kind of kept me focused. So uh, you you're getting the you're getting the goulash of the gospel of Kennison. Anyway, unfortunately, religions. Uh, have been institutions instead of perceptions. Uh, religion has become something you join rather than a transformation that you experience. That's, that's our real problem. We have been conditioned to believe that God works exclusively through the machinery of an ecclesiastical body or, or God works exclusively in religion. I personally, I personally think that religion is probably more of a hindrance than it is a, a help. That's why we have our program every Sunday. This is one of the very few programs that I know of, maybe the only one that I personally know of, that you're getting what God puts in a man's heart and he has no one to answer to. I don't have religion to answer to. I don't have a... a, a board, a state board to answer to. I don't have a local board to answer to. Somebody said, well, then why should I listen to you and trust what you say? For that very reason, I don't have anyone to answer to. I can just give you what God has put in my heart. Now that's exciting. That's, that is exciting that you get to hear a speaker that has one desire, that is to reveal what God has shown to them and he has no one to answer to. That, that's, a, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. We need to refresh ourselves. And I really want to get into this. We need to refresh ourselves with the vision of Paul's sermon on Mars Hill. 
Now, I'm going to read just a little bit of it, but this is what Paul had to say. One of my favorite readers, uh, writers in Acts 17 and 24, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all men life and breath and everything, yet he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Now that's exciting. That's exciting. Somebody said, well, that's, I don't understand what, what you just said. I'm not turned on by, by the Bible, and that's, that's totally understandable. But what I'm trying to tell you is God is not loving. God is the allness of love. God is not wise. He is the allness of of wisdom. Do you understand what I'm what I'm trying to picture here for you? God is not a dispenser of divine substance that he gives to us in the form of money or in the form of health or in the form of the, he's not a, he's not a dispenser. He is the allness of ever present substance in which we in which we live, we move and we have our being. He is the allness of this. See, we talk of, of faith. We talk of faith that God will provide. But what, what do we really mean? What do we really mean? Faith doesn't influence God. Woo! I know this is getting a little heavy for you now. But faith does not influence God. God is not out there to be influenced, and, and so faith doesn't influence God out there to send some of his riches to fill our needs down here. Faith is the spiritual capacity by which he may form and shape the ever-present basic element of the substance of the spirit, and a, that sounds like I just said a bunch of of uh, just a bunch of stuff. But what I'm really telling you is, is that faith is your capacity to receive what you want from God. And there's nothing wrong with wanting that. You know, I had someone ask me this week. Uh, they sent me a message and they asked me uh, who the influences were as far as, as what I teach and, and as far as the vision that God has given me, who are my influences? And I, I said a little bit last week, but you know, well, there was a, uh, well, in the whole general picture, it's not a lot, but there were several uh, men that, that influenced me. My father to start with, who became very progressive in my teen years and probably laid the first foundation down for me. Uh, the Reverend J.R. McFadden in Rockford, Illinois, that ended up being my father-in-law. That was Sam's favorite all-time preacher, and he was one of the best I'd ever heard of, and he, he taught freedom. My stepfather, Dr. A.D. Marnie, is another one that was just a, a patriarch and a leader of the truths that were given to you or to me. You know, there was other very, very close friends, Bob Stone in Oklahoma City, Billy Ely in, uh, in Tulsa. And uh, it, just, it, goes, it goes on and on of those that, that influenced me. But what they taught me wasn't a matter of sitting down like I'm teaching you and just laying it out ABC. What they taught me was to know and how to understand and recognize the voice of God. And that's what we try to give to you here today. Recognize you have the same, you have the same access to God 
as the greatest living spiritual teacher does because God is reflected in each one of us. We are created after the image and likeness of God to the world. They're looking at you and they're seeing what God is like. That's how close he is to you. Yet, as I just told you, we try to we try to beg and plead and everything for that God up there or that God out there to come down here and, and do a miracle for us. Well, really, these aren't miracles. These are things that should automatically follow us. You see, I remember I was in a, I was in pastoring in Rockford, Illinois. I made this statement I'm about to make because I always remember this lady sitting in the front row and the the statement that I made is, is that many, many times I've been broke, but I've never been poor. Broke is a temporary situation. Poor is a, is a permanent lack and a permanent situation. And I remember uh, I was trying to get the people to, to understand that you may be broke, but you're not poor because uh, poor is an, is an attitude, just like being successful is an attitude. Any person who understands this will have the key by which you will always be able to demonstrate prosperity and security no matter what the conditions are. If you just understand uh, that little bit, anyhow, in this in this church, I was telling everyone, you know, how many in here are are broke? Everybody raised their hand. Then I said, is there anybody in here poor? And after all that what I had taught and had explained to them, sure enough, sure enough, here's a, here's a lady sitting in the front row, an old lady, and she raised her hand. And so I tried to tell her, I said, honey, you're not, you're not poor, you're broke. And God can change that situation right now. And I remember she got very uh, insistent about it, that she was poor. And there was nothing I could do. And I finally went, all right, then I guess that you are poor, but I'm going to be broke. I'm not going to have a permanent situation because of my thinking. You see, the thing that makes Jesus' teaching so powerful and so powerfully relevant is his insistence that he did what we can do if we have faith. Whatever. Can you imagine having that power? He never worried about money. If they needed money, he sent them down to fish and said, you're going to have enough gold in the fish's mouth to pay all of our taxes and don't ask for any change back. Render under Caesar's what Caesar's. Uh, can you imagine having the power to cause a calm to come to the sea and of turning that sea into a sidewalk? Those are the same things you can do. The power, if someone has, has transitioned from this life to the next life too soon, and to have the power to go to that graveyard or go to that funeral home, and go, Mary, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Whoever it is, come forth. You can have that power. I know it sounds, sounds like I'm just way out there in the middle of nowhere. No, I'm not. What Jesus did, you can do also if you exercise the faith that he has put in every one of you when you came into this world. You see... God doesn't come and go. He's there with you continually right now. He's with you. While you're listening to this program, he's there with you. He doesn't come and go. God doesn't move a substance from his supply up there to fill your need down here. He doesn't have a bank there. He is with you closer than a brother. He is with you. Your body is his temple. That's how close. That's how close you are to him. 
That's how close you are to prosperity. You see, God doesn't answer prayer in some special kind of a coming forth. I see these, every once in a while I'll see like there'll be a statue that the Catholics will find and, and it's crying tears or or the blood is coming from the hands of this statue or somebody has toast and there's a perfect picture of, of Jesus Christ if you know what he looks like. Uh, anyhow, they, they, they have all these things, but those are all, all misnomers. That's not what God wants. He wants you to be able to look within you, not have to travel somewhere. I remember when I was a kid, uh, the thing was, if you were sick, you, you traveled to where whatever preacher it was that, that you had faith in. And you would drive usually and, and to get to them so they could pray that prayer of faith. Sometimes it worked. Most of the time it didn't. Somebody said, why not? Because God doesn't have a supply. He brings down to you. He is the supply inside of you. Woo! This is good stuff. This is such good stuff. If you listen, it's gonna, this is going to change your life. You see, God is always present. He's totally present as a presence. He's always present as a presence. You may be praying for healing this morning, but the truth is the whole of God is present inside of you as a healing presence. Let him heal you this morning. Some of you, you need that, that financial miracle. Let God bring a healing to your finances. He's inside of you. If I told you to, to, to get out here to Southern California, get out here to Upland, get to the Grove Theater, because Jesus Christ is going to be there. God is going to be there. And he's going to do wonders and miracles. Honey, unless you'd be something wrong with you mentally, you'd be on your way. You'd load up the car with your family and your friends and go, we're going to see God. And God's going to take care of our problems. Well, let me tell you something better than that. He is there within you. You are his temple. You are his house. And he's right at home. Start thinking and start bringing your consciousness to a place of receiving what God has. You may be praying for, for healing. You may be praying for that financial miracle. You see, when you know this, you're beginning to understand what spiritual healing is all about. Once you start recognizing who you are, then you'll start understanding what this spiritual healing is all about. You may be praying for prosperity this morning, but God is present as a prosperous presence. I know I'm, it's a little play on words, but I'm trying to get, get you to see that that financial presence is there inside of you. It's there inside of you. Somebody said, well, you don't know how I live. There you go with the guilt. Get rid of that kind of consciousness. Put the consciousness in there. Regardless, you may be the prodigal son right now. You may be in the pig pen right now, but you're still his house. You're still his son. You're still his child that he's waiting to give you all that you could ask or think. And it even goes on and says, and more than you can ask or think. What are we waiting on? Let's start receiving this. You see, the only, the concept, concept may challenge you to rethink your whole practice of prayer. Usually we only pray out of need. This may change your whole practice of, of how you do that. There's no place in all the universe where God is any more present or any more, less present than it is right where you're at. There's no place, no place in the world that he's more present than he is inside you. 
or less present than he is inside of you. You are somebody. You are a child of the living creator that created this universe. Didn't just create you, didn't just create this world. He created this, this universe. When you realize your relationship to God, you are forever in a field where you can drill for oil and bring it in. I'm from Oklahoma. You can bring it in a gusher every single time if you realize your relationship to God. I want to read Matthew 6 and 19 and then we'll close. Uh, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor, nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart be also. Very simple. He was talking about the focus of our mind and of our thinking and of our consciousness, not just what we do, but what we think and feel. Folks, I'm giving you, I'm giving you all, the, all the tools today. I want to, I want to, I want to thank you for one thing to, for joining us with us every Sunday. Our, our listeners are growing and growing and uh, we, get, we just get positive feedback all week long. And then we run into people that I'm always surprised with. But I want to I want to pray a special prayer for each one of you that's that's watching today. I'm not going to pray for your healing. I'm not going to pray for your prosperity. I want to pray for your mind and for your consciousness. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you give us a platform to give this truth out. And that those that have ears to hear are the ones that's watching and listening to us on Sunday morning and all through the week. I ask you open their channels of thinking. I ask that you give them a consciousness that is stayed on you. I ask that you cause them to realize their relationship with you and then nothing will be withheld. I'll give you all the praise. Amen. God love you. We share again, Sherry and I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, I'm blessed to have Sherry as the mother in our family, and she did a great job with Ginger. Ginger's doing a great job with Scarlett. So we're happy on Mother's Day. God love every one of you. I'll see you next week.